where news comes first. This is ABC 7 Extra. Good evening, I'm Saul Sainz and this is ABC 7 Extra Sunday edition. Thank you so much for welcoming us into your homes this Sunday evening. Now, just when you thought all the controversy surrounding the Duranguito neighborhood was over, controversy has resurfaced, this time on what the future of that neighborhood will look like. But before we get to the future of Duranguito, I want to take a look at the past and bring us to where we are right now. The Duranguito area has long been a battleground between preservationists who want to maintain the historical integrity of the area, while another group looks to redevelop it into an economic engine more attractive to young families and the business community. In 2012, El Pasoans approved a quality of life bond, and within that bond, voters approved funds for the construction of a multi-purpose performing arts center, or MPC. The city purchased buildings in the neighborhood and relocated all but two of the residents living there. The battle for the Duranguito turf moved from the streets to the courts, voters, led by historian voters. and UTEP professor Max Grossman and billionaire J.P. Bryant, a history champion. Seven years, $17 million, and a new city council later, a major turn during the first council meeting of 2023. The previous city council had already commissioned a feasibility study to define what the Duranguito area could look like. The city paid the Gensler Group, an international architectural firm, almost 800,000 taxpayer dollars. My name is Jennifer Countryman and I'm the local architect on Gensler's team and my role was to analyze the existing buildings and the context. Where are you from again? Uh, here, from El Paso. On January 3rd, with three new members on the council and a new majority against building an arena, the plan was unveiled. It would include a venue for events, mixed-use buildings for business and residents, and a majority of the buildings with historic significance would be incorporated all with the money the city still had in the budget for the project, according to the plan. This is a side-by-side -side comparison with the old Chinese laundry and what the neighborhood could look like. There were three proposals for the multi-purpose venue in purple, including an amphitheater with 4,000 seat indoors and the same outdoors, far less than the 12,000 seat arena first envisioned, but a viable project to spur economic development according to Gensler. City representatives listened to the Gensler presentation, then the public. Yes, Mayor, thank you. We do have 83 members of the public that signed up to speak on this item. After nine hours of listening and legal consultation, the vote. And the motion passes four to three. Newly sworn in representatives Art Fierro and Chris Canales joined Alexandra Anello and Joe Molinar in moving the project away from the Duranguito area. Brian Kennedy abstained, citing a potential conflict of interest. Representatives Cassandra Hernandez, Isabel Salcido, and Henry Rivera dissented. Their request to allow for public vetting of the study to postpone the vote and to find out what it would look like to take the project to the voters all failed. That $800,000 feasibility study now sits like the neighborhood itself, dormant and untouched. The question tonight, what is the future of the blighted Duranguito and who will pay to restore and revitalize it now that city council will allocate the MPC funds to another area? Joining us to talk about the Gensler study is former city representative Claudia Rodriguez, who voted in favor of the study, and sitting next to her is David Romo, Dr. David Romo, who is spearheading what he calls a community-generated plan for the rebirth of Duranguito, also known as Plan Regeneración. Thank you so much for sharing your Sunday evening with us. Thank you so much for Thank the invitation. You for us. Let's go ahead and get started with you, Ms. Rodriguez. The Gensler plan is, as I said in our introductory report, sits dormant. After close to 800,000 taxpayer dollars were spent on the plan, your thoughts, and also, Gensler was scheduled to meet on Thursday but canceled. To your knowledge, do you know what happened? Hi, thank you again, Saul, for having me. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I think it's imperative that the public knows that there was an opportunity um, for them to go and find out what, more about the study. After all, the public did pay over $800,000 for the study, and essentially what I believe happened was censorship. I believe that there was an opportunity for freedom of speech for people to go and have open discussion on what they believe the results were of that study and that was shut down. 
and I don't agree with it being shut down. I hope that it could be rescheduled for some time in the future because again, I think it is important for the public to come and, and have a healthy discussion and a healthy debate as far as you know what happened, what could have happened there. And I think ultimately it was a great compromise. I do believe that, you know, after months and years of debate you know i came into council wanting to resolve this thing i was told to kill it or move it meaning the the arena project and i believe that i fought really hard to really bring compromise to bring healthy dialogue to the table and for people to say hey like well, how can we resolve this and buildings were going to be saved it was no longer going to be an arena it was going to stay within budget and it would have been a great opportunity to celebrate the history of this neighborhood not just the history of this neighborhood but of our community of our culture as a whole who do you think was behind the censorship or the blocking of that or canceling which led to the canceling <laughs> of that meeting who do you think was behind that um i think i think it's an obvious answer i believe that it was Max Grossman, that one that was behind the, the shutting down because he, he prides himself in beating the city at all takes. And unfortunately, he is now participating in censorship and he's now participating in shutting down dialogue and conversations. And I think that that is a very um, sad situation for the city of El Paso and we're allowing that to happen and again you know we don't have to agree with everything we don't have to agree with one another we can have different perspectives we can see bring to the table different ways to save that neighborhood mm -hmm. and that's what that that presentation would have been about and you know not only that but there's a lot of businesses my family included that have businesses in in south el paso street that have been there for many many years for generations and it would have been an opportunity for their businesses to succeed as well right. and now unfortunately the neighborhood that i fought so hard to protect is now in a blighted gated cage and it's going to stay in that cage because it belongs to the city of El Paso and unless somebody is willing to come in and pay the 20 million dollars that the city paid for it that's where it's going to remain and the Gensler study would have showed like several buildings over half of those buildings the most important buildings I mean it's a compromise would have been saved they would have been restored they would have brought a new energy and a new type of development into that area that could have been beneficial like I said not okay. just to the community to the business community right. but to El Paso as a whole we're tired of this nonsense it's been going on for over a decade already right Dr. Romo let's get to your thoughts before we get to the community generated plan your group has your thoughts on the Gensler plan the Gensler plan never consulted with the community that would be more most affected uh, basically the residents themselves they were not invited uh, as part of the spearhead group that, that, that uh, helped to put it together. Uh, we were not invited, some of us uh, historians who know the history of basically every important historical building within Duranguito. So I believe it was flawed from the beginning. Uh, the Gensler plan proposed a smaller arena, a 7,000 seat arena that would have been about 15 to 20 feet in front of some of the residents that still live there. And nobody took their interest in mind. Okay. You know, how, how would most of us feel if we had to put up with the construction of an arena, and it might take several years, and all the, the dust that's going to be created when, when right. this arena uh, is being built. Okay. Nobody's thinking about them. All so right. I think uh, the Gensler, the, ultimately, the Gensler plan is a non starter. It's already moot because the city voted against it and there was a, 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 a lawsuit. Let me, let me interrupt you for a Go second ahead. because yes. we're going to take a really quick break. We're going to continue the conversation, but when we come back, we'll take a look at the plan, uh, plan regeneración, a community generated plan for the future of Duranguito. And just like um, uh, Dr. Romo weighing in on the Gensler plan, we'll hear Claudia Rodriguez's thoughts on the plan regeneración. You're watching ABC7 Extra Sunday edition where news comes first. We'll be right back. 
in the savings all month long in Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso. You'll save thousands with zero cash out of pocket. Interest rates as low as 0% APR. That's right, 0% APR is back on many new Hyundais. And payments as low as $199 a month. And the best part, we have the best inventory we've had in years with 0% APR and zero down. Elantras and Sonatas, Konas in Tucson, Santa Fe's and more. All in stock today, not tomorrow, but right now. The savings are blossoming at Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso. Using meth taught me everything about freedom, only not like you think. It taught me how easy it is to lose your freedom, how meth can take control until you find yourself doing whatever meth tells you to do. Before you get there, while you still can, take a stand for yourself. If you feel yourself losing your freedom to meth, Ask for help. Accept the help. It's worth it. You have the power to be truly free and be the person you want to be. I know. I'm Jan, and I'm free from meth. If you or someone you know is struggling with meth, call 1-800-662-HELP for 24-hour free and confidential treatment referral. Learn more at samhsa.gov meth. As the world watches, welcome to ABC 7 at 5. The accuracy of the information you depend on, we begin with breaking news, resides in the strength of the people who bring it to you. Tonight, 45 million Americans under alert. The most powerful block of news in the borderland. With Eric Elkin and Stephanie Valle at 5. Followed by World News Tonight with David Muir at 5.30. And capping with ABC 7 News at 6. News from the team you know and trust. ABC 7. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. I also want to welcome back our guest, former city, city representative Claudia Rodriguez, who voted in favor of the Gensler study. Sitting next to her is Dr. David Romero, who is spearheading, spearheading what he calls a community-generated plan for the rebirth of Duranguito, also known as Plan Regeneración. This time I'm going to start with you, uh, Dr. Romo. Let's show the public some of the pictures of your Plan Regeneración. As we're watching these, please tell viewers what this plan consists of. So the Plan Regeneración began with the community itself. Back in 2016, the city voted to exclude Duranguito as the site of the arena. They were in turn going to fix up the Civic Center. And this is a plan that the, the residents, and a lot of them were later displaced, but the original residents came up with, and that is to create a, a historic uh, heritage site that will attract tourists from all over the world, showcasing the vibrant history of Duranguito. But not only that, also an opportunity for the people who were displaced to come back, and if they choose to live in, in, in the residence in an improved version, right? right? They will be able to come back. So this is, this is that idea. How do you create a space which showcase our authentic culture? And the, the pictures that we're watching right yes. now, what is it exactly? Is this just a, a revamped version of what we're actually seeing right now, the, the, the video that we showed earlier of pretty much a demolished neighborhood? Is this, right. uh, is this just people going in and refurbishing all this? Yes. So basically, you can see on the top left, you'll see where we would propose, the residents themselves proposed a Mexican Revolution Museum. So there, there will be opportunities to showcase the history. One of uh, the last standing sites of the largest Chinatown in Texas, the Chinese Laundry, mm -hmm. uh, we have proposed that that could be an Asian American center. So showcasing the fact that El Paso has a history of immigration that precedes Plymouth Rock, you know, the first, the Camino Real passed through Duranguito, right. and that's from 1598. So why don't we showcase that? There's yeah. also ideas of, of uh, converting certain buildings into uh, places that provide services for the neighborhood. Most of the people that were displaced, there were about 50 people displaced from Duranguito. They were elderly, they were our abuelas. Yeah. Inst instead of seeing them as obstacles to progress, why don't we include them in possibilities even of, of job creation? For right. instance, yerberias or traditional healing centers with medicinal herbs. Right. That's one an question important that I, component. Right, one question that I have, as you well know, the Gensler Plan had, was funded to the tune of 800, almost $800,000. Um, 
but how does your plan, does it have any funding? Yes, it does. So we just met with the mayor a couple of weeks ago, and by we, I, I mean representatives of the residents uh, that belong to Paso del Sur. Two um, groups have formed recently to collaborate with Project Regeneración, and it's a nonprofit group that intends to buy some of the buildings and an LLC as well called the Duranguito Restoration How LLC. How much money? Yes? How much money is it being funded by? Excuse me? You said it's funded. How much funding does it have? So when we talk to the mayor, right now what uh, Mayor Leeser has indicated is that he wants the city to sell these buildings. And yes, the tune is between 15 million to 20 million. The city unfortunately pay, paid some of the developers and, uh, and real estate speculators three times more than what they were originally bought for. But now, because of the city and these developers, a lot of these buildings have intentional holes in them, right? So yeah. it's depreciated its value. So the mayor has told us that he would like to sell them, and there was a discussion that he would like to sell them to the county. So tomorrow- So you'll take that money essentially, well, on Monday, right? So essentially, the, you would take that money or the, the county would take that money and then give it to you all. But here, as promised, uh, Ms. Rodriguez, uh, are you familiar, first of all, with the plan? If not, your thoughts on what you've seen so far and the idea itself. What are your thoughts so far, as opposed, obviously, to the Gensler plan? Right. So I think that the Gensler plan was a hybrid. It was going to actually provide funding to restore those buildings, like the Chinese laundry building that Mr. Dr. Romo was referring to. And I think that that would have been a great win, again, for the community because it would have been already included in that project. No one is going to pay $20 million for those buildings, and the city is not, the county doesn't have that type of funding to purchase $20 million worth of buildings, number one. Number two, $20 million, and then you still have to pay to restore them. As a historian, Dr. Romo should know that sometimes restoring buildings is a lot more expensive than not, and so I think that First of all, also, I want to say that in that conversation about the, when everything started happening about the Gensler study, um, the people that were suing Dr. Grossman, Max Grossman, the one that was suing the city, he was given the opportunity to come, and he had first, first hand, first serve, first, or first, he was there first. So first he was, dibs, yeah. Yeah, first, so he was able to absolutely participate in that Gensler study. Um, the city did, I think, a really good job at reaching out to the community and asking them, what is it that you all want to see here? And by those results, by those surveys, we can see that people really cared to s restore and to save the buildings. And so there was a hybrid model that, that actually would have saved these buildings. It would have restored these buildings and it would have brought new opportunities for the people that live there, for the people that work there. And now there is no plan. And this plan of um, regeneración is what you said? Plan Regeneración. Plan yes. Regeneración. Um, what it does is basically what was already going to be done in the Gensler, with the Gensler study. But now the challenge is that there is no money there. Right. Versus there would have been the money and the funding to fix and to save those buildings. I actually made an amendment um, to restore the buildings that had the holes because I thought it was very unfair that those, hold, that those buildings were being dis destroyed by the weather and I thought and I said, hey, I want to make an amendment that we include to while we decide whatever it is that we're going to do, that we save those buildings, reinforce them so that they don't further deteriorate. Okay. We're going to take another quick break. But you may have noticed we have no current city representatives on this program to talk about the measure to talk about either the Gensler program or Plan de Generación. I did reach out to representatives Henry Rivera, Brian Kennedy and Alexandra Nello all declined to participate or had prior engagements. I called Mayor Oscar Leisure's office along with an email invitation. Mayor Leisure did not respond. I also invited Adair Margo, who is also the proponent of the Gensler plan, and she too declined to appear. Also on my list of invitations was UTEP Professor Max Grossman, who you just heard mentioned right now. Uh, Grossman was critical of the Gensler study, but declined to appear as well. Anyway, you're watching ABC7 Extra. Still ahead, I asked my guests where we go to from here on the future of Duranguito, the response when we come back. Oh, that spin class was brutal. I bet. Hey, can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. 
It's wireless. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? It's a uh, Buick Envision. That's a really tight spot. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. Buick Envision, built around you, all of you. Get this low mileage lease on this 2023 Buick Envision Preferred for around $279 per month. See your El Paso Las Cruces Buick dealers. This is a meal worth sharing. Right now, get four hot and spicy McChicken sandwiches, 20-piece chicken McNuggets, and a basket of fries for $16.99. Only at McDonald's. A feeling this dynamic is invite only. Fortunately, you're invited. Experience the exhilaration of the performance line at the invitation to Lexus sales event. Lease the 2023 IS300 for $529 a month for 39 months. Hi, my name is Tony and I am the owner of Morramia Restaurant. My dream of starting my own business began more than seven years ago, but my business reality really began when I connected with First Light. They were so fantastic to work with, and I think that any small business owner or dreamer like me should become a member. And just start, start today. I mean, why wait, verdad? Welcome back to our third and final segment of ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. I also want to welcome back our guest, former city representative Claudia Rodriguez, who voted in favor of the Gensler study. And sitting next to her is Dr. David Romo, who is spearheading what he calls a community-generated plan for the rebirth of Duranguito, also known as Plan Regeneración. Now, I want to, this question is for both of you, really, because right now it seems that Plan Regeneración wants to pretty much refurbish the entire neighborhood, but without any new amenities. However, the Gensler plan wants also to refurbish the uh, Duranguito neighborhood, but with new amenities. Is that correct, uh, uh, Ms. Rodriguez? Yeah, I mean, I think had had the pro had the study been first of all allowed to be finished because it wasn't it wasn't finished. It was basically just this is what we have up until now. Had it been given the opportunity to been completed and presented properly, I think that it would have been there would have been a very good consensus as far as like a hybrid again between what Plan Regeneración was is bringing to the table and this this bond that was elected for or voted on in 2012. Now. The discussion of whether we agree with that bond or not has, we're, we're past that now. Like now we have this money, it's been over a decade and something has to happen and it has to happen downtown. And this is the other exciting thing, this is the one most exciting thing that I found about that project or that study was that very quickly it identified that it wasn't going to be an arena. And so everybody fought against an arena myself included and we it found really quickly that it would have been a multi-purpose center the true language of that bond the mpc that's what would have been constructed and built and i think that it's very unfortunate that the taxpayers paid eight hundred thousand dollars that the city moved in good faith to try and resolve this issue with the people that were suing and costing the taxpayers millions of dollars and that it wasn't allowed to be presented properly and then when we tried again to present it this past thursday to the public and open it was an open invitation to the public that it was shut down why was it shut down what are we so afraid to find out that it could have been an opportunity for healing. It could have been an opportunity for the community to come together and say, you know what, let's move past this. It's been plenty of time, it's been over a decade. And yeah, like let's restore the building. Let's bring people back into that area. Let's yeah. energize it. The people that are, have businesses there were, are going to benefit from it because who's benefiting from a blighted, gated community? Right. No, no one. Right, let me ask you this, what happens to those 800 thousand dollars has it just gone down the drain it's gone down the drain at this point so there's no way to get that money back there's no way that the city will be reimbursed no. if we don't follow up or anything no like that? the city will not be reimbursed the eight hundred thousand dollars for the study just gone it's gone those 20 million dollars that the city paid for those buildings 
Dr. Ramos correct. No one's going to pay $20 million for them. They have holes in them. Yeah. No one's going to pay that money. All right, uh, Dr. Romo, let's ask you. Let's say, for instance, you do get funding for your plan, Plan Regeneración, yes. and we don't obviously don't know the exact amount of money that you'll be awarded, but if the plan is not implemented and has the same, faces the same fate as, as the against your study, what happens to that money? Is there any reassurance that any money that goes into your study will be either implemented or reimbursed to taxpayers? Because the bottom line is, this is taxpayer money. Well, at this point, we haven't presented our plan in front. We've chosen to present it first in front of the uh, county commissioners because we do agree with the mayor that that might be the best way to bring about this plan. And not all of it will, it may be that the county may only buy some of the buildings. We don't know yet. We haven't presented. This is an idea that we are going to present as these different organizations that now want to bring forward Plan Regeneración, as, as Mrs. Rodriguez says, as a way to heal the community. The Gensler plan is no longer an option. Why not? Because the city uh, council voted against it on January 3rd. And a second most important reason is because the city dropped its appeal to the Texas Supreme Court, which would have allowed them to demolish the buildings in Duranguito. Uh, and they were now only saying they were going to demolish only five of the historic buildings, not all 12. So it's a non-starter. So I don't think we should look backward anymore. And Yet the money has forward. been spent, though. The, the, the money has, has been spent, spent yeah. in terms of building an arena in Duranguito. Perhaps the Gensler study can, can look at, say, uh, you know, that, that site where the railroad, it, railroad is behind City Hall. They might look at other locations and keep some of that initial study. Um, so the there problem. is a way of bringing both studies together, well, is what you're saying. But I do need to emphasize right now that that purchasing, it would require the city spending more taxpayer money to buy that site that Dr. Romo is, is talking about. And I don't think that that's something that the community is going to be okay with. I think the community feels overtaxed. I think they're fed up with it. They want us to yeah. stop spending the money, their money, right. and just do something with things already. Absolutely. And, that, so, that, that. and so I don't think uh, the money is a big thing here. And absolutely, City Council did have the power to say we're done with it. And just the same, if this is something the community is tired of hearing, this community can absolutely advocate to their city representatives and tell them, we want you to bring it back. We want to hear the full results of that study. And they have the power to do so. Will they do it? Probably not. Dr. Romo, the community thoughts. has the power to say, let's stick to the original original language of the 2012 bond. It said nothing about the creation of a new facility and when it comes to a multi-purpose uh, cultural center. It said that it could be used, those monies could be used to improve, to make improvements on an existing cultural facility, such as the convention center. So I believe that using the Gensler monies to create a different arena site. I agree with Mrs. Rodriguez. I think that's a waste of money. Let's just take the laws and move forward. Okay. I would much rather that money be used to fix On the convention center. that note, Dr. Romo, Claudio Rodriguez, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. And thank you for joining us. As I said earlier, I invited city leaders because one of the questions that needs to be asked is what happens to those $800,000? Only city leaders can answer that, and you have a right to know. These are your city leaders, and you should feel free to call your representative and ask. I'm Saul Sainz, and this is ABC7 Extra, Sunday edition. Good night y buenas noches. Thank you for watching. ABC7 News is now available on any of these streaming services, as well as the KVIA News and KVIA Weather and Traffic apps.